Joe, as always, good to see you. Good morning, AJ. Thanks for having me. And we're certainly excited to uh, have you on the air for Veterans Talk. You know, it's uh, come, come on. I know it's a monthly highlight for you, for sure. We it, definitely like the opportunity to uh, t talk to our area veterans. It sure is. I mean, it's great to be here. It's great to pick topics to talk about. And, and uh, really, our ultimate goal is for folks to know that there's benefits out there. You know, if you're a veteran or the dependent of a veteran, spouse or child of a veteran, we need you to get to your county service officer and find out what's going on for the federally and the state and the benefits and see what's going on, which is one of the things we're going to focus on today on the federal side, uh, federal VA healthcare, we had a uh, special guest with us today, and she's going to discuss one of the uh, newer programs um, with the VA that they're doing. Um, it's a foster care program for veterans, and uh, it's a really great program, and it's in our area now, so we wanted to get the word out and let folks know, and we'll introduce our special guest. Yeah, certainly. Joining us for this month's edition of the program, we have Angela Gabhart. She's with the VA Medical Foster Home Program. Angela, thank you so much for visiting us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And so, as Joe, as you said, this is an exciting program that the VA is starting up. So, Angela, would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Well, the Medical Foster Home, uh, the pilot program began in Little Rock, Arkansas in about uh, 2000. So, it's been around for several years, but um, it started out as a pilot program and uh, just as a result of its success, eventually spread uh, throughout the United States. So it is uh, an integrated program within the VA now, and again, it's medical foster home, and um, it's an alternative t uh, for long-term care for veterans. All right. And that's, these are veterans with needs, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. And how about their spouses? Um, spouses are also welcome uh, in the medical foster homes along with the veterans. Mm -hmm. So with, with the veterans, obviously they have to qualify for care and um, through the VA and uh, be receiving care through the VA. If they are not, let's say if anyone's listening and, and they've never registered with the VA, um, we're going to obviously give you numbers and tell you who you can contact for that today to do that. But uh, we will uh, assist you in getting enrolled uh, Absolutely. to determine eligibility yep. of the VA. Yeah, yeah. The, so the first step is they need to be enrolled in VA healthcare. Yes, and that's uh, that's a process that veterans can do, and that's something they can do with their county service officer. So if you're here in Jefferson County, uh, Faith Weirs, our Jefferson County veteran service officer, she's down on uh, 315 Jefferson Street, and you can reach them at 812-265-3600, and I'd say give them a call and uh, set an appointment up. Let them know you're interested in VA healthcare and. Uh, gather what documents you have, DD-214s, marriage certificates, whatever mm -hmm. seems important, head down and uh, have a meeting. And these are one of the things that, um, this is a great program as well to kind of maybe spur some folks to think about going and visit. And, um, you know, as we talked in the past, one of the most important things about just going to see your service officer is, it seems more than half the time, folks wind up with a lot of good benefits that are very helpful to them and if that wasn't even the reason they went. So, you know, it's pretty individual to each person what you may or may not qualify for. So it's important to go down there. And I think this is a great program to check out as well. It's certainly, uh, we, we encourage everybody to just go down, down and ask. So talking about the foster home program, so this is, it's essentially, it's an alternative for a veteran or a spouse to an assisted living facility. Exactly. So and one of the uh, main goals with me being here today, obviously, is outreach uh, to the veterans, but also uh, outreach to anyone that might be interested in opening their home to veterans um, for uh, as a medical foster home sponsor. Um, we can uh, go over some of the, the guidelines if you would like to Absolutely, right now. Yeah. Um, so caregivers obviously uh, have to be 21 years of age or older. We go through a background check. We also um, go through um, uh, a process where we have inspections for all of the homes, right? Safety is always going to be one of the number one things. Um, there is not a licensure requirement, but in many of our homes, our caregivers are uh, LVNs, they are CNAs, they are RNs. Um, and one of the most important things is that they have some previous experience in caregiving and um, also have a love for veterans, first and foremost. 
and, and, and the veteran lives at this person's house. Yes, they actually live there. So you, as a caregiver, you are literally opening your home and going through the process and working uh, with the VA to uh, get your home up and running as a medical foster home. Um, the limit uh, that a caregiver can have uh, in the home is up to three people that they care for. So, or three veterans, or it could be a veteran and their spouse, but again, no more than three people because the whole goal is to um, make it a home environment versus a, a nursing home environment and offer a different feel and to be a part of that family. As, and as somebody that has you know, experience with family members in assisted living facilities, that, that sense of home is just critical to making you know, recovery and just in general stable yeah. living. And, and I'm, I mean, I've worked in healthcare for um, several decades, so uh, nursing homes are great, assisted living facilities are great. This is just an alternative that the VA thought would be, um, again, like a, a good program that uh, took off. And uh, for some veterans, this is maybe their only family they have. Um, we have all uh, sorts of caregivers with different backgrounds, uh, rural, and some that are uh, in, you know, in downtown Louisville. So we have a variety of caregivers with a variety of environments to offer. So definitely a, a tremendous opportunity, and Joe, like we said, an uh, opportunity for folks in our area not only to you know participate in the program by you know signing up for it if you're looking for that, but also we talk all the time about how you get people locally that want to volunteer to help veterans. Absolutely. And you're not going to get much better than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a great way to step up and have a veteran in your home and help them out this part of their life where they need some assistance and. It's got to be great for the veteran too to, to have a one-on-one -on -one family feeling as opposed to a facility where you know for some veterans that might be a better option so it'd be great i think for people to open up their homes and mm -hmm. if, if they're in the right position in their life and they can handle that i think that's something definitely to look into it'd be great um, as we said joe always appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk about the programs that we have in place to um, help our area veterans absolutely that's what we're here to hopefully just get some information out outreach and let folks know uh, what's going on for veterans and their dependents and uh, get that information out to them as best we can and, and mostly let folks know that uh, if you're in Indiana you have a county veteran service officer whichever county you live in all 92 counties have one um, they're readily available as far as information goes if you go to the uh, Indiana Department of Veterans Affairs website which is uh, uh, in.gov forward slash DVA like Department of Veterans Affairs you'll get to our website and on left hand side you'll see county service officers click that link and there's a map of Indiana click your county and that will pop up the service officers name address phone number and hours uh, email and everything else so that's all right there and readily readily available so for this program or any program out there really there, there there's so much going on federally on the federal side and the state side that's available out there and and really the Talking with folks um, at, at the coffee shop and other places is a great start, but keep in mind that you know the experts on knowing what you do or don't qualify for are going to be your county service officers. They're, they're boots on the ground right there helping veterans on a daily basis, and those are the folks you want to talk to. Those are the folks you can confirm. Maybe you don't, you don't qualify for some things, but you might also learn that you may qualify for other things. And there's a a plethora of benefits out there from education benefits and health care benefits and disability compensations and pensions and we've talked about a bunch on the show and we'll talk about more again and we just want folks to know to get out there and get to those service officers even something like today you hear something on the program today about the foster care program or you have an elderly veteran in your family and this maybe isn't the program but you're thinking oh well maybe there's something out there that county service officer is your first place to start um, if it's not in our area, um, I know Angela's got some counterparts in other parts Absolutely. of the state and country, so find your service officer and they can help point you in the right direction. As Joe said, talking with uh, Angela Gabhart, VA Medical Foster Home Program, and as we said, definitely a great opportunity for people to get involved um, and just ask those questions. And as we say, you know, like you said, you may be calling about one thing, but you may walk away with a lot of information on something else you didn't even know about. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I was going to add another question or two for Angela. I was, oh, fire I'm learning about the program as well. Certainly, so. yeah. 
Um, I do know that if there's a host family, mm -hmm. they are compensated, correct? Correct. Okay. So how it works financially is um, the financial arrangement uh, an agreement is made between the veteran and the uh, and the host family or the caregiver. So uh, the rates are a little less than assisted living would be, and it is private pay. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have uh, veterans' families that uh, will call in and ask, you know, if they have a certain service connection, you know, getting into the long-term care uh, aspect of how the VA can pay for nursing home level care, those veterans that are 70% service connected and greater, it still remains a private pay um, arrangement. Mm -hmm. So it is less, a little less than assisted living would cost. Um, we, we don't set that rate, so that uh, uh, nationwide, that's up to the caregiver and the veteran. Okay, so, so it would actually be negotiated between that particular caregiver and the veteran. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. We can give a ballpark, you know, figure. Right. So, and, and a lot of times it may depend on the level of care of the veteran. Mm -hmm. So the veteran uh, has to meet uh, a nursing home level of care, but that could be for different um, issues that the veteran's having because they also are going to, uh, along with us as the coordinators that come in um, and oversee the program, they also have to be enrolled in our home-based primary care team. So they get uh, the gamut of the medical services. And um, it's like I tell veterans, uh, I had a veteran a couple of weeks ago I uh, met with, he had been told years and years he didn't qualify for um, a non-service connected pension. He didn't think that he had served, you know, in a, in a period uh, that would qualify him. Well, lo and behold, I said, let me just make a phone call and um, ended up, he did. And we, when we were talking, he said, oh, I didn't serve during this time, but I got called up eight months later and I was like, do you have your DD-214? He's like, well, I have about uh, four different periods of service. So we ended up linking him up with a veteran service officer and he was going to be able to get the benefits. Excellent. So it's you just never know. And, that, and that's one of the the, the cross agency, cross communication that's important with this, as well as that we all know who to go to. Yeah. Um, you know, it's important for our county service officers. One of the one of the pleasures of my new job here um, that I'm doing now is trying to find all the other programs, even non-veteran programs that are just in every community uh, within our. That, that reaches our veterans um, in our counties because we have a lot of veterans who come in with they have may have a few needs and the county service officer can address one or two there may be other needs that that veteran needs that aren't veteran related and maybe aren't handled from the state or federal VA but it's great for our service officers to have that 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 uh, virtual Rolodex of information of other services that they can help point that veteran to and try to make sure the other services know to send veterans and their dependents to their service officers. So that, that circle of information and keeping everybody, even providers and caregivers mm -hmm. and information folks, in the loop with each other is really important too. And so it's, it's wonderful to hear when stuff like that works out. You know, you, t you talked about the, um, the compensation for the veterans, uh, the foster home program, and obviously we, you don't want a situation where somebody's just in this for the money. You want the compassion there, but, you know, it is a burden, you know, on, there are going to be costs involved with taking care of somebody in general, right. so having that available is definitely an incentive. Right, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, we go through uh, what we would, you know, call a, a vetting process, right? So it's, even when our caregivers uh, apply, there's an application process, and um, it does obviously include um, a, a financial um, disclosure so to speak because anybody wants to be compensated if you're going to open your home and we you know we we want that but at the same time we want to make sure safety first and and that there's a love for the the person that's coming into your home or or for the gift of caregiving that you have so and, uh, well, the veterans, if there's veterans who have uh, more needs than others, is that, that's considered with which home as well, right, as far as... Exactly, exactly. So we have caregivers that um, are comfortable uh, providing a certain level of care. Um, maybe we have caregivers that are really good with dementia. Um, 
uh, with dementia patients, uh, and then we have veterans also that they you know stay in a medical foster home until until they pass. We can offer hospice services in the home, so every caregiver is unique. Um, we have a great. Uh, uh, farm that's in, in, in Henryville so I'll go ahead and, and throw that out there so I love visiting there right they've got goats they've got llamas so mm -hmm. we have uh, families that call and they're like you know my dad was uh, raised on a farm do you have anything that would be comparable to, you know to um, providing that environment so we welcome any phone calls to any you know anyone that thinks that they might be mm -hmm interested in, in this program. Great. And I know you, you mentioned earlier that the um, the veterans in the foster home program, part of the enrollment was they would be in the in-home primary care. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question would be, the foster care program, is it limited, not limited, um, is it focusing on veterans who are in need of custodial care or have a need for an assist the assistance or, or is it open for any veteran who just decides he wants to live with another family no because one I wish but um, <laughs> one of the uh, one of the uh, things that they have to qualify for is for home-based primary care so we work in conjunction with home, with our home-based primary care and um, they they will have to meet that level of care okay and for folks listening the, the home-based primary care um, correct me as I go here. I believe it's 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 something where if you're enrolled in VA healthcare and you've got physical uh, limitations due to d disease, disability, or any disorders that you have, where you can't get to your primary care clinic, this is a program where the clinic will come to you. We go to your home. That's okay. correct. Okay. There's a nurse practitioner, an RN, a, a social worker. We have dietitian. We can bring okay. in different therapies, recreational and uh, okay. get the home care. Yeah. So the limitations that would qualify you for the in-home care are the same that would qual qualify for home-based primary care. Got it. Exactly. It would be the same for the foster care. Exactly. Got it. All right. Great info. Um, we were talking earlier a little off air about how um, I had mentioned before that you know our county veteran service officers are there in every county in the state and they're there to provide the services we talk about for veterans. It does not limit uh, who they serve by the actual border of that county. Um, we, we have our county service officers all work together really well, um, and the state of Indiana is working to keep that going, foster that, and grow that with things like our centralized uh, data system that we're using now, where they can cross-reference back and forth with each other. And you know, with county lines, some folks may live in one county, but they're a lot closer physically to maybe the courthouse of another county. So you know, use whatever county service officer is convenient for you. And uh, we have our, our, uh, our veterans, our brothers and sisters across the river, Carroll and Trimble County. Um, for my years with the Jefferson County office, you know, we've never turned those folks away. When I took the job uh, years ago from Dick Jones, my predecessor, he had said that, you know, a lot of these folks who come here, they have a different setup and don't have as readily available someone to help them. And uh, always love to take them in. And I know Faith is not only accepting, but she's even reaching out as even further into that area. So it doesn't matter where you're at. If you if physically uh, or for any other reason, there's this county service officer that someone needs to deal with, wants to deal with, or is located closer to, you know, those county lines are there. They're imaginary lines and very crossable in this job. Certainly, we definitely appreciate the opportunity to uh, reach out and spread that information. Today, excited to have Angela Gabhart talk about the VA Medical Foster Home Program. Uh, Angela, one more time, anybody that's interested in this program, uh, who they need to contact? All right, so uh, to get in touch with us, I'm going to uh, give you our main office number, which is in Louisville, so it's 502-287-5995. And uh, ask for me, Angela Gabhart. I also want to throw this out too because um, we have, there are four coordinators with the Medical Foster Home Program. So anyone in the listening area, um, we, we cover uh, Fort Knox, uh, Louisville, Southern Indiana, and then I'm in, out of our Scottsburg CBOC, and we can reach out obviously to Madison and uh, a few other counties uh, within a, a certain radius. So 
we welcome anyone to call again 502 287 5995. We certainly want people to reach out to that program. Absolutely, and and for this information or any other information, you can contact your county service officer. Um, at, on the website, you can find those folks, and if you're here in Jefferson County, that's 812-265-3600. Uh, is Faith Weir, the Jefferson County Veteran Service Officer. And that's a great place to start. And uh, want to go ahead and throw out um, uh, a quick bit of information as well. I try to make sure we talk about it every 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 month. Is that you know, we do have folks locally that want to help out veterans. Um, we get a lot of questions from folks, even they ask about, they get letters in the mail, donations from national organizations, they think about donating, and that's always great. I think, you know, I don't want to disparage anybody. I do know if it's VFW, American Legion, and the Disabled American Veterans are all great organizations. So if you get a request for a donation for someone you're not real sure about, I would say, if you haven't heard of that organization, it'd be worth checking out. Um, there are unfortunately, you know, unscrupulous people out there yes. that use veterans and other other folks as reasons mm -hmm. to, you know, get donations and that money doesn't really go where you want it to go. So you can't really go wrong with the, the big the bigger organizations like I mentioned. And locally, um, we have our disabled American veterans VA van service that we use here locally. Um, the Jefferson County Veterans Council runs that program. They do a great job with it. Uh, they, they, they currently are able to take veterans to New Albany Clinic and to the Louisville VA Hospital for their medical appointments. And this is for veterans who can't get rides. Um, so it's a great program. Um, they do a great job running it. I believe there's a new vehicle in the works, which is pretty exciting. They're going to retire out the old van soon. But if you really want to help out, um, you can contact them via uh, Faith down at the Jefferson County Veterans Service Office to be a driver. Um, it's a voluntary basis that they need drivers. They're always looking for drivers. And uh, there's a little bit of a physical you need to go through. It's, it's, it's not the simplest process, but it's not that hard to get in there. And even if you could drive just one day a month or, or even limited, you don't have to get stuck with the schedule or anything. But the more drivers they have, the more availability they have for our veterans. So that's a great way to get immediately involved. and. and and help veterans directly right here in Jefferson County, our neighbors and the folks we all know. So that, that's a great opportunity if anybody wants to drive. As you said, join this program, definitely want to see people help out when they can. Absolutely. Angela Gaphart, VA Medical Foster Home Program, thank you so much for joining us this month. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate we it. We definitely appreciate the chance to talk to you. And Joe DeVito, State District Service Officer, as always, Thanks always again. good to talk to you. All right, we'll see you next month. See you next month for sure.